and welcome back to another vintage inspired video more specifically welcome back to another episode of the classic cinema cocktail club you may notice that it is looking very spring ready around here and that is because it is in honor of the film we're looking at today which is 1948's easter parade the film was directed by Charles Walters and starred Fred Astaire, Judy Garland, Peter Lawford, and Anne Miller. It was intended to reunite stars Gene Kelly and Judy Garland following their success in the musical The Pirate in 1948. However, Gene Kelly broke his ankle a few weeks before production began by playing volleyball, of all things. Since he was out, MGM thought, who can we go to that is an equally as talented dancer as Gene Kelly, and obviously that is Fred Astaire. Though Fred Astaire had announced his retirement two years prior following the completion of the film Blue Skies, but he was interested, having missed creating films. However, he was friends with Gene Kelly, so he wanted to first go to him to get his approval, which he did. Gene Kelly gave him his blessing and even went so far as to encourage him to do it because Gene Kelly felt it would help get him back in the good graces of MGM. This was the first and only pairing we get of Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. They were supposed to reunite in the film The Royal Wedding. That never ended up happening and the role went to Jane Powell, which is unfortunate because they were so good together in this, but at least we have Easter Parade. We're gonna do this a little bit differently than I have on past episodes. Before I have talked about the film and then moved into the cocktail. For this, I am going to introduce you to the cocktail sooner and interweave the plot of Easter Parade while making the cocktail as best I can. So the film is set in 1912, which got me thinking what drinks were popular then? I did a little bit of research and I came across The Bartender's Guide of 1876 by Jerry Thomas. And in this guide, we are first introduced to the cocktail, the gin fizz. And I know 1876 is not 1912, but the cocktail only grew in popularity. So I like to think in 1912, it was being very well consumed. And I liked the idea of a gin fizz because gin is full of botanicals, which reminded me of spring and also it has an egg in it, which come on, egg and spring go hand in hand. The little chicks, the little eggs, it makes sense. There's more, it's not just that. There, there are, I have my reasons for what inspired this cocktail and I will continue to share those with you. All that to say, we're making a riff on a gin fizz. Here's how the original gin fizz recipe appeared in that 1876 book. It was four to five dashes of gum syrup, juice of half of a lemon, and a small wine glass full of gin. I guess jiggers and ounces weren't a thing. You put all that into a glass with shaved ice, shake it up, strain it, top it with seltzer from a siphon, which is way cooler than just opening up a bottle of seltzer water. You maybe know what I'm talking about, but I'll put a picture right here. I always see them in old movies and think they just look so cool and classy. And my favorite part of this recipe is the last line. It says, drink without hesitation. You'll notice the absence of egg in that original incarnation of the gin fizz. It wasn't introduced until later. And there were two different ones. There was the golden fizz and the silver fizz. Golden fizz had an egg yolk. The silver fizz had an egg white. And when the gin fizz was first created, it was consumed largely as a nightcap and touted as a hangover cure. I wanted to bring springtime more into this cocktail. So instead of just using a regular simple syrup or a gum syrup, I'm using a lavender honey syrup because I thought lavender blooms and bees and we have so many lavender bushes around our house and they're covered in bees this time of year. So it felt very indicative of springtime. And I thought it would add a little bit more to just a regular gin fizz. I'm also going to be using London Dry Gin Bombay Sapphire, which is pretty popular for its heavy botanicals. There's notes of juniper berries, coriander seeds, lemon peels, and licorice, and I haven't forgotten about the plot of Easter Parade. So it takes place in 1912, as I already mentioned, in New York, and the plot is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's an MGM musical from the 40s. It's not super complicated, but it is very enjoyable. The film opens on Don Hughes, played by Fred Astaire, buying gifts for his dancing partner and sweetheart, Nadine Hale, played by Ann Miller. But here's another casting change due to an accident. The role was Sid Charisse's, but she fell and broke her leg on a giant staircase while filming the movie On an Island With You. 
So the role went to Ann Miller. After buying those gifts, Dawn shows up at Nadine's place. I'm not sure if it's an apartment or a fancy hotel room. And there he learns that she has signed a contract to go off and be a solo act. And he's really bummed and he tries to persuade her out of it to no avail. Enter Johnny, Dawn's friend, played by a very attractive Peter Lawford. When it comes to the cocktail, I again look to early 1900s cocktail history for ideas. And I came across that book I already mentioned from 1912. It was called Recipes for American and Other Iced Drinks. And something I noticed throughout that book that was pretty common was adding Angostura bitters. It was the number one ingredient in a lot of these recipes. So as a nod to that book of 1912, we will be adding Angostura bitters to our cocktail. I also noticed they added powdered sugar a lot to the drinks. That's not something I feel like I notice going on a lot in modern cocktails. So maybe we'll have to do that in some other future episode, but we're adding the bitters to thank that book of 1912. It is time to start building our cocktail. I am calling this the Hannah and Hughes. Fiddle up, fiddle. And I haven't gotten to the plot yet where Judy Garland enters, but her character's name is Hannah Brown. And we're gonna do two ounces of London Dry Gin. This bottle's been in our freezer for a very long time, so we're gonna finish this. But fun fact, both of these bottles are from our wedding now a few years ago, so... They're going to good use. We are going to use an ounce of lemon juice. Next is our lavender honey syrup. I made this earlier. I'll put the recipe and the caption of this video, but something to note, it greatly reduces down. Just keep that in mind. Now we add our egg white. This, I forgot to add, this is orange blossom water. I wanted to include it just to make it even more springy. A little bit goes a long way. We're looking to just do a drop or two. Okay, that is more than enough. We're gonna give this a dry shake, which is what you do with a cocktail that has egg white in it. It helps to emulsify and get that egg white really nice and frothy and fluffy, so when you pour it into your drink, it has a nice white foam at the top. I haven't forgotten about the plot, so Don, after he learns that Nadine will no longer be his dance partner, goes to a bar to drown his sorrows, and he tells the bartender, I can make a star out of any dance partner. And he picks Hannah Brown, played by Judy Garland, he learns, though, the next day that she basically has two left feet. And we, the audience, are to believe that Judy Garland cannot dance, which is a hard thing to believe from such a talent as Judy Garland. And then Johnny, Dawn's friend, takes an instant attraction to Judy Garland, and she informs him that she loves Dawn. And no disrespect to Fred Astaire, but between the two, I would have had to have gone with Peter Lawford because he's so handsome in this film. But. There are so many beautiful dance numbers and of course miscommunications that are very popular of the films of that era that lead to the ups and the downs. You have to watch it to see what happens. But now we're gonna dry shake this for 15 seconds at least. If you can do it for longer, that's good. To really get that egg all frothy, it's hard to top and do this. All right, now we pour. Cannot forget our Angostura bitters as our nod to that 1912 recipe book. We're gonna garnish with this sprig of lavender from our garden. Here is our first cocktail, Hannah and Hughes. I think it looks pretty. It smells very springtimey. I could smell the orange blossom water from here. I'm getting so much lavender from that syrup. Now it is time we give it a taste. You get the bubbles right away. It has that dry mouthfeel that I talked about in the first video I did. It was a sour, so of the same family. It must be the lemon juice. It just like dries out your mouth, makes that pucker thing happen. It has that spiked lemonade flavor. You do get that lavender from the lavender honey syrup, which is nice because I think that that really is what lightens it up, gives it those floral notes that make it feel like spring. I know that these cocktails I make have some more exotic 
ingredients or just some things that are gonna take you a little bit more time. If you are interested in craft cocktails, I think it is worth it to take those extra steps to make a more elevated drink at home. The only booze in this is gin. So immediately that is gonna lighten up a drink and make it something that you can just sip on and not feel well, that's funny. I would say not feel like you're going to get a hangover because like I said earlier in this video, this used to be considered a hangover cure and I can kind of see why. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly strong, which again, it not being super sweet, I think makes it drinkable because if I drink anything sweet, too much of it, I just get a headache. On to the second cocktail now because I could not make this simple, of course. When I first started brainstorming, carrot juice is the first thing that came to mind because carrots and bunnies and Easter all made sense. But when I started to get onto the historical cocktails and the gin fizz, it didn't work as well anymore, but I didn't want to let go of it. So this cocktail is still a gin based cocktail. We're going to be using Empress Gin. In the movie, they do drink champagne and bourbon, but I recently made a champagne cocktail in this series and I don't like bourbon. I've mentioned this before. Um, so. I'm trying to hold off from doing bourbon, whiskey, that type of cocktail. I'm sure I will eventually, but putting it off. So this is gonna be similar to what we just did, but a big difference will be carrot juice and no egg. We're gonna start with one and a half ounces of carrot juice, followed by half ounce of ginger liqueur. Oh no, this bottle's so hard to open. I can't open the ginger bottle. Oop, made a mess. Half ounce of lemon juice, followed by a half ounce of our lavender honey syrup. That is it for what we're gonna put in the shaker. We're gonna add more of the ingredients once we get it into the glass. So we need to add some ice. Some ice, pour our shaker in there. We're gonna bring back our club soda and I'm gonna just eyeball this, but just gonna be about an ounce and a half of club soda. We're gonna layer on this beautiful Empress Gen one and a half ounces into my jigger. I'm gonna pour it down the side of the spoon to try to keep it from mixing in. We'll see how well that goes. All right, unfortunately, it doesn't look as pretty as I was hoping it was going to look, but we're gonna garnish it to make it look Pretty. I'm gonna just mix it. It won't affect the taste at all. It was more of just a visual thing that I wanted. Oh well, it doesn't always work out how you planned. We're gonna, of course, use our Angostura bitters to harken back to that book from 1912. And <laughs> I'm gonna garnish with this carrot from our garden, but I think it's maybe Maybe a little bit too good with the size of it. Keeps wanting to roll away. It is still pretty dramatic. And on top of that, I'm gonna put in a couple of flowers. Mm -hmm. That looks so pretty, so springtime ready. If you wanna add edible flowers to your drinks, look for pansies or marigolds. Those are really great options. These two are neither, but I think they're fine. Okay, there you have it, our second cocktail inspired by the film Easter Parade. I don't think I told you what I was calling this one. It is called Your Easter Bonnet. In your Easter bonnet. I think it is time to taste it, but I need a straw first. First thing I notice, it's pretty subtle. I do love the bubbles. I think bubbles give a great texture to a cocktail. Much like our first one, in the sense that it is very drinkable, it is very light, and even though it has a little bit more liquor in it because of our ginger liqueur, um, it's still not overbearing, overpowering. This one is very reminiscent of a lemonade. This one you're drinking carrot juice, so that makes it healthy, right? Both of them I think are very spring ready, which is great because that checked the box for our inspiration. Light, bubbly, florally. I think they both look like perfect spring cocktails. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. This one is more tart. Maybe overall has a little bit more flavor punch. This one, I don't really taste the alcohol in it. I taste the gin botanicals, but it doesn't give that really astringent alcohol flavor. I think I might make this one for Easter myself. Sour, earthier, 
drier mouthfeel. This one may even be good with instead of the club soda, doing some sort of tonic water, an elderflower tonic, I think could be really good. Just to have a little bit more depth of flavor, I don't think would be wrong in this cocktail. I also just love how the flowers look in this one. This one can have flowers too. I'm a big fan of the garnish. Big fan. All right, that does it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you make these. And if you do, I think you'll agree they are perfect for a spring day. If you make them, let me know in the comments because I want to know what you think about them. And watch Easter Parade. It is just a great MGM, feel good musical. I mean, you get Fred Astaire dancing, you get Judy Garland singing, you get the two of them doing that together and the only film they worked on together. You can't go wrong. And until that next video, I am wishing you a super swell day and I will see you then. I can't wait. Bye. Grace, not Grace Kelly. She's not in this. Of American and other, such a weird name. Mess that up, mess that up. In your Easter bonnet. That was terrible, I can't sing.